Hi guys, here's section 1.2. We got a few more samples. Um, our first option is to shove this stuff in and see what happens. So when you put a two in there, that becomes four minus eight plus four, that is zero. Uh, don't fret because if the bottom is some number other than zero, we're done and the answer is zero. Throw in two in the bottom and you get four plus two minus six, which is also zero. When you get this indeterminate form, zero divided by zero, factor, cancel, and shove it back in. We might have to algebraically manipulate this uh, other than if something's not factorable. And we'll see if these guys are factorable. What times what is x squared? x and x. What times what is 4 but added together is negative 4. And they both have to be negative. What times what is x squared? What times what is 6? But added together, it gives me a positive 1, so I have more positives than I do negatives. Once you've got it in the factored form, then you can cancel. Reapply the limit. Let all your x's approach 2. This time when we reapply the limit, we get 2 on the top, or 0 on the top, and 5 on the bottom. Final answer, 0. This thing is approaching 0 as x approaches 2. Gosh, this looks nasty. Uh, plug in 1 and see what happens. 1 plus 1 minus 5, but plus 3 more. We're talking about 0 on the top. <clears throat> 1, throw it in here, 1, 3, minus 3, and 0 on the bottom. That means we have to factor, cancel, and shove it back in. The top, it may be factorable by grouping. The bottom, mm, not so much. So the way I do these problems, when it's higher than a quadratic, when the degree is higher than 2, I just use synthetic division. We know that one is a root. So the factor that causes it to be a root is x minus one. We know that x minus one is a factor to each one of those, both on the top and on the bottom. <clears throat> so now after factoring out an x with uh, minus one, let's see what let's see what's left over. So put a one in the batter's box. I'm gonna Factor the top. Rewrite all the coefficients out in front. 1x cubed, 1x squared, negative 5x's, and 3. Bring it down. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. If this number is something other than zero, we've done something wrong, either in the initial uh, application or somewhere in our synthetic division. What was once x cubed is now down to x squared, x, and the constant. So that's how the top part factors. The factor that caused one to work is x minus one, and here is the other factor. It may be further factorable, and we may have to do that, um, but let's try and see how the bottom factors. Again, use synthetic division on that. <clears throat> we know that 1 is a, uh, a root or x-intercept or a solution, so we put 1 in the batter's box and write down all of the coefficients, 1x to the third. In the absence of an x squared term, don't forget your placeholder. Zero x squared, negative three x's, and two. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Excellent. What used to be x to the third is now down to x squared, x, and a constant. Again, that might be further factorable um, let's put it up here and take our chances. 
cancel out these two factors and then reapply the limit. When you put one into this equation, you're going to get one plus two minus three. When you put one in the lower equation, you get one plus one minus two. So here we are. We're still stuck at the indeterminate form. We need to factor some more or do some algebraic manipulations. <clears throat> what times what is x squared? What times what's 3, but added together is positive 2. To get that positive 2 out of this, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. <clears throat> That's how the top factors. The bottom. What times what's negative 2, but added together is positive 1. And that's how the bottom factors. Can any of these cancel? Sure. Didn't you know that this x minus 1 was going to be another root? Because when we plugged 1 into it, it zeroed it out again. Now, plug 1 into it. This time when we plug 1 into it, we get 4 on the top. When we plug 1 into the bottom, we get 3 on the bottom. Voila. You guys can always graph these and make sure when you graph them that you encapsulate these things top and bottom in parentheses or use the fraction key and see if this is approximately correct. There will be a hole in that graph, so you won't be able to hone in on the exact value, that method, but you'll get close. Okay. Here's a couple more problems and then we'll call it quits for the day. When you plug in 6, oh, look, it's the difference of perfect squares. So you think you have to factor it, you have to factor it, and uh, not necessarily the case. When you plug in 6, you're going to get 12, but when you plug it in the bottom, you get 0. Remember on those, you want to graph it and see its behavior as you come from the left-hand side. So... Graph that, it becomes a problem just like section 1.1. Take a look at this one, though. This one's a little bizarre. When you throw 9 in, you get 0 on the top. When you throw 9 in, you get 0 on the bottom. That's the indeterminate form that tells us we need to factor, cancel, and shove it back in. Mr. Kubler would probably multiply top and bottom by this guy's conjugate. The conjugate of root x minus 3 is root x plus 3. And then he would get things to drop out that way. Um, the way we can do it to save us some time is this is not the difference of perfect squares, but it's the difference of squares nonetheless. So we can factor this top in the irrational world. What times what is the x? And remember, we're trying to get a, a, a factor down here at the bottom to cancel out. So what times what's x? Here's the clue. Root x and root x. What times what's 9? 3 and 3. One's positive, one's negative. This cancels with that. It's no longer 0 over 0. You shove in the 9 and get 3 plus 3. 6. I hope these examples help. This problem down here is very similar to number 4. You guys can give it a shot.